Okay, so what we have here on the bench today is a WaveTech function generator. It's an oldie but a goodie. And uh, this is one of those surplus purchases. So uh, it, uh, at first, it would seem that it's, uh, it's putting out a nice uh, sawtooth waveform and everything's all fine and dandy. But upon closer inspection, you can see that this sawtooth has uh, some garbage on it. And as we start expanding it out, we notice this repeating glitch. And that's not just in the sawtooth wave, that's in the square wave, it's in the sine wave, that glitch is uh, everywhere. And that glitch is running at about 100,000 Hertz. The scope right now is set to uh, 10 microseconds and you can see it repeat just about once per division there. So it's a little bit sickly. This, uh, this uh, poor thing is ill and uh, the objective is going to be to fix this thing. Now I've done quite a bit of troubleshooting on this and I've got to admit, this thing led me down the garden path. And I can tell you why it led me down the garden path. Because uh, when I took a look at the power supply in this, uh, the power supply looked good. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that here in a second. So when I go in and I probe this power supply, I want to make sure that you can see the meter. I probe the uh, rails are supposed to be positive and negative 15 volts. That's the negative 15 volt rail. And this is the positive 15 volt rail. Everything looks pretty good, but let's see if there's some ripple on there. So I'm going to switch over to AC voltage. I'm going to probe this again. Look at that. There's no AC on that power supply at all. Absolutely wonderful. And there's no AC on the positive rail either. Look at that. No AC. Isn't that nice? We're going to find out here in a bit that that really isn't as nice as it looks. We'll take a look at some schematic diagrams. I'm going to show you the grief that I went through finding out what's really going on here. So this is the rabbit hole that I started to go down here. I started taking a look after the... There's a current switch down here that puts out a triangle wave. That triangle wave comes into this triangle wave amplifier. And at the output of this triangle wave amplifier, that triangle wave looked fairly clean. It then goes to this hysteresis switch. And uh, coming out of this hysteresis switch over here, is a square wave and also coming out right over here is another square wave. So those two square waves had that garbage on them and this triangle wave coming in here it actually looked reasonably clean. So I started rooting around in this hysteresis switch and I was looking up in this area with my oscilloscope and I saw that garbage right here. And just by chance, I happened to look on the other side of these three resistors with my oscilloscope, and I saw the garbage on that 15 volt supply. And at that point, I went, Really? I don't have any garbage coming out of my power supply because my fluke meter told me that, uh, that uh, it had zero volts AC on that power supply. The only thing is that fluke meter wasn't measuring 100 kilohertz and that 100 kilohertz waveform was right on this power supply. So now we're going to go back down and we're going to take a look here because uh, at that point I realized that I may have a power supply problem and there's two jumpers in on that circuit board that you can pull and disconnect all the rest of this entire circuitry from the power supply and just look at the power supply. 
This is the power supply right here. All this in this area. And you can see here that we've got two big 1,000 microfarad capacitors here. Now, the fact that there's an oscillation coming out of this power supply, you know, it leads me to believe that this is a frequency determining device. And that's what kind of led me to, to solve this problem. Um, these two capacitors over here are 100 microfarad at uh, 16 volts. Um, and then there's these 2.01s. But these are pretty stout, these 0.01s. Uh, these are highly suspect, these 1,000s. But uh, it tur they turned out to be good. But these 200 microfarads over here, um, they're the ones. That's where I finally found a bad component there. So here are these two jumpers that you can disconnect. But there's no need to disconnect them. I'm going to get on the positive one here. And I'm going to get on that, and we're going to take a look at the oscilloscope coming out of that power supply. Now that's plenty ugly right there. Now we're going to take a look here at the other one. This is the negative power supply. Take a look at that. That's just plain ugly as well. So we've got an issue here in this power supply. And... What I did was, I disconnected these two filter caps, and I took a look at them, and they looked real good. And then, there are two more filter caps that are right on the end of that power supply. And those two are right here, and right here. These two little fellas right there, here and here. And when I disconnected them and took a look at them, all of my capacitor testers said that those were good capacitors except for one of my testers. And one of my testers did not recognize this component. It didn't recognize it as a capacitor. It didn't recognize it as anything. It just, when it looked at it, it said, I don't know what that is. And so... My thought is, is that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to replace these two capacitors. Uh, I'm not going to replace just one of them, even though this is the only one that it said was bad. I'm replacing both of them, and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. That's what I wish it looked like. So first we'll take a look at this capacitor right here on the tester. Let me push that down. And there uh, it says 89.6 microfarads. Now that's supposed to be 100 microfarads. So it's definitely an underachiever. Has uh, a tiny bit of a high ESR. And uh, it's not that great to start with. Now let's uh, take a look at this other one here. We'll get our leads on it. It's always easier said than done. There we go. Let's take a look at how it tests. You'll notice that that tester is taking a really long time. And so here it tells you it doesn't recognize that as a capacitor. 
it doesn't even know what it is. So uh, that's uh, pretty much so what led me to replace both of those capacitors. And uh, here you can see the new capacitors here that I've put in. They're nice and straight. And uh, those are Rubicons. They're 100 microfarad. A little bit higher voltage, but uh, for all practical purposes, the same, uh, the same ones. So as long as we're here, let's uh, turn this thing on and uh, get it running. Just a second here. Let me reach down and plug it in. That might help. Yeah. There we go. Now, we'll have to get the oscilloscope probe going here. And uh, here we have the two power supplies right here and right here on these rails. And when I put that oscilloscope on that power supply, take a look right there. There's nothing on that power supply now. Not a thing. And here's the negative power supply right here. And again, we have absolutely nothing on it. Now, both of those power supplies are reading uh, 15 volts, and that's really good news. Positive 15 and negative 15, they're dead bang on. And uh, so that's real good. We'll come back here in a minute, and we'll take a look at uh, what kind of a waveform this thing is putting out now. Well, there we go. Now, if you take a look at that waveform, that waveform is just looking great. Real clean, doesn't have a bunch of garbage on it. And it doesn't matter how far we expand this thing out. There's nothing on that waveform but waveform. And that's exactly what we want, that other garbage out there. That's the last thing that we need on there. So that's working real nice. And there's, it's putting out a square wave, putting out a sine wave, real nice sine wave there. So this thing is working really nice. Uh, there are a lot of other functions that this will do. And uh, it is a function generator and it will sweep and it'll do all of that, uh, that good stuff. So I'll be uh, testing all of those functions but for all practical purposes, it looks like we got that 100 kilohertz oscillation out of this power supply by replacing those two capacitors. And now we've got a, uh, a surplus by generator that's a, a real nice signal generator, real nice function generator. Does more than a than signal generator will. So, well, there you go. That's the end of this video. And there it is, the WaveTech 184. It's got uh, plenty of other functions on it here that I'll be testing, especially the sweep. But I'll be honest with you, I tested the sweep while it was malfunctioning, and the sweep section on this is working just fine. So, uh, well, there you have it. I just couldn't let you off the hook without showing you the sweep function. It really works nice. And uh, you can set the start frequency and set the end frequency. Put it on continuous sweep like this. It'll just uh, do that sweeping over and over again.